Hi, I'm Mark Cleghorn. Welcome to the Photographer Academy and we're shooting headshots again in studio. Uh, in this session, we're going to be looking at the essence of the basic headshot se session. So if you're introducing this into a business, whether it's commercially going out to a client's offices or working in your own studio space, this is something that you can bring in. Uh, we're kind of going through what I would say is the, the basics. In other words, all we're going to be doing is one lighting set setup. In this case, it's going to be a rectangle softbox uh, kind of an oval shape uh, with a, a grids on. We're going to be using uh, just one other light to either light the background or act as a separation on the hair. Um, basically, the essence of the film is to kind of show uh, show you how simple it is to, to kind of achieve and shoot uh, without any real kind of skill sets at all. I would encourage you, to, though, to use um, a kind of as long a lens as you physically can, whether it's a prime or a zoom. And I definitely say if you're going to shoot a commercial style of image, have a greater depth of field, so in other words, something like F8. If you're looking for a little bit more kind of modern creative, something like F, F4 will allow you to actually get that variety. Enough from me, enjoy the film, take care. Um, so, uh, we're gonna be stood up, please, darling. If you just go back a little, there you go. Come up to me a touch more, turn the body that way a little bit, that's great, and just turning the head to me. Okay, so the first thing's first. Let's not muck around, let's kind of get the test shot done. Um, and uh, if you kind of look at that image, you can tell Natalia is just looking directly down the lens, all right? It's better for us that, especially when we're using the likes of a studio stand or a tripod, that Natalia's eyes are gonna look at me and I'm just above the, uh, the camera. So let's do the same thing, lower the chin a little bit more for me, a little bit lower, that's great, just there. Let's do it straight at me again. Little half smile, you can do it, that's gorgeous. Turn the body this way a touch more. Turn the head back to me more now, that's lovely. Little lean with the head on the side. Little lower the chin, happier, faking it. Good faker, that's lovely. And again, it's great just there. L lower the chin a touch more, higher the chin a little bit more. Big lean with the head back there, that's great. And again, happier, it's great. So uh, let's just push the arms across the body. That's lovely, and do the similar thing again. Keep, hang on a minute, let me get ready. So I'm using the 7200 lens, which is traditionally my commercial headshot lens. Uh, let me just get ready for you a minute. Um, there we go, keep it. And again, uh, so we're gonna lovely images. Serious me as well, please, Natalia. That's lovely, less of the pout. It's not a self selfie. There, turn the head around to me a little bit. Turn the head a little bit more. And again, it's gorgeous, keep it. Excellent. So. Um, it's quite flat lit that as you can see we've got the strip box above and high we haven't needed to add the kind of the triflector in position yet that's what we're going to be doing now so just taking this up a little bit higher Tri triflector is not going to be our best friend in this setup and the reason being is i've got the egg crate still on yeah so uh, where an egg crate is involved that's that kind of grid on the front of the soft box D, D, D. Um, it's really designed to have spread of light rather than uh, kind of uh, just a little bit of the light. Turn the head this way, it's a quick, quick test a minute. So remember we've gone up higher, the catch light's gonna change its position just a little bit, but now you can see we've kind of lit underneath the chin as well. Let me just move myself, come up to me a little bit more, Natalia, that's gorgeous, darling. One second, lower the chin a little bit more. Great, just there. Turn the nose back to me square on. Turn the head this way a little bit. And again, turn the nose square to me now. That's lovely, it's there. Little half smile there as you are. It's gorgeous. Turn the nose a little bit more for me. And again, great, relax. So um, if you miss an image with light, like that one there, just perfect, okay? That's just by luck, yeah? It means that we've shot too fast for the, the last image to have the, re, uh, the recharge. Why? Uh, basically, we're using a D-Light 1 as the backlight, and, uh, which is kind of the entry-level flash, and then we're using the kind of the, pre uh, the premium ELC as the key light. So I can shoot kind of rapid with the key light itself, but the problem is, of course, if we're overcooking it, so in other words, we're shooting too fast, that little background light, that's doing most of the work because it's got to bounce off a background wall before it then comes back again. So it's using a lot of its power uh, is really not going to be our friend and things really. Um, so anyway, um, at the same point that I'm doing these, I will also do a kind of a mid key style of image straight away. And group one, which is the one from above. Uh, what I want to do here though, is actually just change my um, ISO down. 
uh, a stop so I can shoot at 2.8. Let me just have a quick look. So this is just the one light. Now, at this point, the, the background looks quite beige and everything else with it, okay? Let's just switch that uh, modeling bulb off so it kind of kills any of the tungsten of the actual light. So, um, at times, the modeling bulb itself can actually create a color. So let's have a quick look at the, dif at the difference there. Look at the grayness now. Now, one of the benefits, if I just kind of show, uh, show you a comparison of those two, yeah? You can see why you would want to actually switch the modeling bulb off. Now, if you're using the likes of the Sekonic meter, you can tell the modeling light to go off from the meter itself, okay? So you just kind of press the little magic uh, uh, light button and it kind of goes off, so you can kind of bring it on and off. But realistically, as far as our background is concerned, you can see how clean white and everything else that is with it and things. Okay, let's do it again, please, darling. Come up to me a touch more. That's gorgeous there. Lower the chin a touch more, that's lovely. A little half smile, and again, turn the head this way a touch more, that's gorgeous. Eyes at me, and at me, darling. Again, a little lean with the head onto this side a touch, and again, it's gorgeous. There's a little bit of a curl of a hair coming down on that side, just lose that bit of a curl. There you go, you can see it. Let's have a look again. I quite like the curliness on the shoulder. Turn back to me again. I think we need to bring it back, the hair. Mm -hmm. Uh huh, it was just that one piece. Look, you're thinking about it now, stop it. Yeah, 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 okay, let's do it again. A uh, little lean with the head on the side for me again. That's gorgeous there. Lower the chin again, serious first. Turn the head this way a touch more, and again, raise the chin a touch. Excellent, happier, faking it. That's lovely, and again, daddy, it's great. Turn the body that way a little bit more, lean backwards with the head, big expression, that's lovely. So when I'm dealing with actors and singers and dancers, they, they really do need to actually show that little bit of a character as well, okay? So when we're seeing that kind of lovely little flow, she's got such a beautiful mouth and a beautiful expression, you need to actually show off characteristics. That's what we're doing. In the same way as when she's dancing, you know, I need to show off the figure and the muscle tone and the sh shaping of flexibility. When we're doing the headshot, remember, if she's in um, a show or a film or whatever it would be, or kind of a backing da da a dancer, they're just not looking at this. <laughs> Nobody wants to look at this, I promise you, as, my, as far as me is concerned. Um, but they're just not looking at her physique and shape. They're looking at her size, how she'll fit in with the other dancers. They're looking at her expression. They'll be able to tell from the expression uh, that she's kind of friendly and bubbly and everything else with it. So if they, they want to see that kind of character, remember our job as a headshot photographer is to sell them. That's our kind of, she's my product here. Sounds terrible, but she's a product. Without me doing my job she ain't gonna get any work okay but but this is a nice simple kind of back uh, uh, background so if you think about it let's do another one I can shoot here one second lower the chin again darling that's gorgeous keep it turn the body square on to me now that's good just there go over that way a touch more come up to me a little bit there you go again turn the nose this way a touch eyes at me happier you can do it. Go for it, darling. That's lovely. Relax. So um, again, from there, you could have that as a white wall. So if you were kind of going into a small studio space, like in a, a boardroom or an office space, whatever it is, you don't need to light the white wall as long as you're around about four to five feet away from it and you allow some of your light from your key, uh, your key light, which is high and spilling over the top, to give a little bit of illumination. Obviously, it's different if we want to kill the light fully. Right. Um, if you whip off and just go get changed as quick as you can, all right? Let's uh, kind of just change things around. As far as the highlight uh, is concerned, it's pretty much done its job, but just before I take it out of its position, we're gonna be uh, kind of leaving it there to shoot whatever she comes in. Basically, we're gonna photograph against the white background as well with it. So uh, we're photographing a quick trick. Um, I talked about reducing my, uh, app sorry, my ISO down. Uh, so I could shoot at 2.8 instead of the F4 that we were on before. So if we kind of go upwards, and we just do a comparison in those, you'll see that we were shooting at F4 at 400 ISO, yeah? That's showing us on the metadata here, yeah? F4 at 400 ISO with the highlight on, 
And then what I want to do is, you'll know already if you watch my basic to headshots, I like f2.8 to f4 as a maximum, especially in my modern kind of creative. Uh, so the modern creative is around about f2.8. And she's got such a great look that I can throw the backgrounds out and everything else with it. If I needed to ensure that the depth of the nose to the back of the ear, I'd need to actually kind of increase it to 5.6 f, f, f8. But the quick trick that I do is to um, have work in a, come on in darling, yeah, bro. Um, so work in a slightly higher ISO, i.e. 400, uh, 400, I can swap it straight away down to 200 ISO, and that means that I can reduce down my F4 to 2.8 without touching any of the lighting. Great, princess, come up to me a little bit more, that's great. Okay, because I moved the uh, um, uh, triflector, she doesn't know where to stand now, okay? So just kind of coming through. Come up to me, darling, whoa, that's great, it's there. Uh, let's uh, turn the body, um, do you know what? Let's just do this first, okay? Okay, so straight on to camera, uh, to camera position. Looks pretty good. Um, when we're first beginning to um, shoot at the beginning of the session for the client, as a rule of thumb, I'd encourage you to shoot left and right, all right, to actually see where to dominate the images from. So what do I mean by that? If you, um, fir first of all, turn the shoulders this way and now turn the head that way. Eyes at me, please, darling. Now turn the shoulders that way. Turn, 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 turn. Go with the feet as well, feet. And now turn the head back, that's good. Turn the shoulders that way more and turn the head back to me. Not quite as much, please. Lower the chin a touch more, that's good, just there, let's keep it. Turn the nose this way a little bit. Eyes at me, it's good. Okay, so if we just did a side-by-side -side comparison, you would think, in fact, they're exactly the same, but they're not. Um, people all always have a slightly different kind of width. Now, as soon as, um, I look at Natalia, uh, Natalia, straight away I'm analyzing the face. I'm looking what is great and what is not as great. All right, I'm not gonna say that out loud to her. Plug in your ears, all right? Uh, but I'm looking at the width of the face on two sides and going, where is her best side? What is gonna make her propor proportionally together? So you can see here why I've kind of always turned her body, yep, yeah, um, from the camera, uh, the camera position towards the nine o'clock. Okay, remember the camera is always at the six. I turn her body towards the nine o'clock a little bit. So she's gonna point between the six and the nine as a rule of thumb, okay? But then we're gonna turn the head back towards here and it's all about proportional positioning of the face. It's very hard to talk about this when I got <laughs> the client here, all right? But in a normal world, I could say to Natalia before we do anything else, which side do you prefer? All right, but my job is to make her look amazing. And remember, a client sees themselves in reverse. So when they look at photographs, they traditionally go, oh, I don't like photographs myself, or what's something to do with that. But the main time is they're looking in a mirror and they're seeing a reverse image of themselves. So they actually never ever see a photograph that actually looks like them. That's why I turn you that way all the time, in case you didn't know, all right? Right, so before we do anything, let's do it. So that's why your body's turned around towards there. Let's kind of bring up the hands just up onto the hips, in fact. Let's kind of, there you go, darling. Slightly little lean towards here. That's beautiful, one sec. Uh, come up to me a touch more. Little lean again, that's gorgeous. And again, little half smile, and you can do it happier, faking it, that's lovely. Bring this hair all, all the way down the neck for me. Yeah, bring it down, it's lovely. It's gorgeous. Lower the chin again, please, Danny. That's great. I've got my hand on my hip, and I'm just with the po po posing. A little lean with the head onto this side again. Turn the body around towards here a little bit. Turn the head rack back around to me. That's lovely. One second, let me just get back on your eye. Happier, faking it. That's lovely. And one more. Relax. Just step off for a minute. I'm just going to slide another background in. So, um, as it was, I thought she was coming back in the brown, all right? But it's no big deal. I'll take the the old master off. So this is a quick way now for me to instantly hot swap. Um, Natalia's got a great figure, so I could shoot with the white background if I wanted to anyway, because it'll show off the slim shaping and everything else. And, and with dancers uh, and models, we need to actually do body shots as well. So as a rule, we'll either be in a, a kind of a leotard or a body, or we'll be doing some, la some lingerie or swimsuit, whatever it is, because they need to show the figure and shaping off as well, all right? Uh, so for certain different types of client, you're gonna need to actually allocate certain different types of photography. But as I was mentioning at the beginning, the kind of the price 
pricing, what we're doing here is all head shot photography. If Natalia wanted a uh, body shoot as well, that would obviously can then go up to the one and a half hours or even up into the three hours for all the, mul uh, the multi-change and so on, all right? So it's just knowing what you're trying to achieve during the day. Princess, let's jump you back in there. I'm just going to move my little orange shuttle. There you go. Come up to me again, darling. Uh, that's good. A little bit. That's great. Just there. Um, let me just move. Slight twist there of the sh shoulders there. Twisting the head back to me again. That's lovely. Lowering the chin again. That's gorgeous. Happier. Faking it. It's lovely. One more. Turn the head this way. A little bit. Eyes at me, please, Natalia. That's gorgeous there, darling. And again, st stay there. Let me just bring in the triflector. Uh, don't worry if you haven't got one of these. Um, the main thing would be is to try and have some kind of white reflector below. It could be a, a tablecloth. It could be a piece of card. It'll do the similar job kind of thing. Straight shot first. Okay, that's lovely. Again, turn the body square onto me before I forget. That's good. Just there. Eyes at me. Straight above me. That's lovely. It's there. A little lean with the head on the side. Turn the body back on towards here. Body more, 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 more. Turn the head back to me a little bit. There you go, it's good. And again, raise the chin a touch. Um, you know what, if you are having to, oh, that's beautiful. I love you. Okay, that's really, really nice. We're gonna show you how to add a hundred quid onto your shot in a minute, all right? It's, e it's easy to add value to into your photography. Um, but yeah, but, um, so if I was a headshot photographer work, uh, working during these lockdown times that we're in and I've got a mask on, my voice needs to be louder and it needs to be expressive. It needs to be cheekier or ser serious in everything that I'm doing. Um, so you've got to make sure that if you are having to use a mask because you're working in clients' offices or whatever it is, you have to change what you do and you must project yourself a bit more like an actor and things. Princess, if you jump off stage just for a minute, and want you still back as you are, my don't move, yeah? Um, I'm gonna add um, uh, sails onto Natalia, and all we're gonna do is add in a separation light. So let's just quickly bring the, um, D, uh, the D light one out of the, high, uh, the highlight. If I was in offices and they wanted a three-sided three studio, basically what I mean by that is if they wanted three different looks of each one, I wouldn't be moving any of the lights, yeah? I pretty much kind of uh, want the um, main light just to actually follow around in the position that we're doing. Right, let's switch this one on. I definitely need the modeling bulb on now, no matter what, and I want it on its fullest. There we go. Natalia, could you think you could just go back in that position again, just so I could see if it's going to hit you? Okay, that's good, just there. Hang on a minute. Great. Right, so the first thing I want to do, though, I've put it in position, is I want to see what that light is going to do, okay? So I'm going to just take the shot and see how much de detail is there in the hair. That's absolutely essential for me to see what it's doing. If possible... I want this light coming in from almost the 12 o'clock position. Because then, especially uh, with somebody with very, very thick and long hair, we've basically got that lovely kind of sep separation on both sides, which we do have now. Okay, so great. Now I can switch both the lights back on again, and I can shoot as it is. Okay, serious first. Let me just check you look beautiful. Awesome. Okay, that's gorgeous. There again, eyes at me. It's lovely. Slight little lean with the head on the side. Little half smile. There you go, it's lovely. Raise your chin and touch that. Let me just come back a fraction. That's good again. Keep it. Eyes at me. It's lovely. Turn the body around there more and turn the head back to us. That's it. Keep it. Serious. Raise the chin, darling. And again for me, let's go with the arms pushed. The reason that we're doing that is to actually we, we push the boobs together, especially with a, a woman with a cleavage or shape of a kind of a cloth that they've got on, like a shirt, whatever. We definitely want to exaggerate the femininity. Um, even a more masculine styling of woman uh, tends to actually want to have that just touch of femininity within it. Obviously, there's exceptions to all rules and things, really. Okay, so just there. So... It's not a selfie though, okay, so no pouting. Turn the head this way a little bit, that's lovely. And again, happier, faking it again for me, darling. That's lovely, and again for me. Lean the head more, it's gorgeous. One more, that's good. Relax, love it. Really, really nice kind of thing. Right, what are you doing here? Go get changed. Um, so we're going brown next, isn't it? 
Yeah. Do you know what? Just to make it nice and e easy, and I wasn't planning to do this at all, but let's just push the background in. <laughs> um, I plan to actually move the camera around to show, uh, to show you the kind of the move, uh, the move in the position, move in the light, uh, the lighting with it. You can see that my kind of strip box here is running very close to a six o'clock posi uh, position. Um, and basically, uh, all, all we've got to do is make sure um, that we've got some kind of shadow. I, I do like a shadow. Why? Because it basically thins a client. Uh, Natalia, uh, obviously, she's got a great look. She's a young, a young woman. It's brilliant. Um, she's a young woman. She can pull anything off. But we've got to make sure that we're still giving her shape. Um, if you were looking to show clients images on the day of the shoot, a quick tip, you shoot one shot and you overexpose it with aperture. And why? Because it bleaches out the skin and then they can't see kind of all the pores and everything else with it. Because the last thing I want to be doing is going in here and basically before a client sees anything is kind of going, oh, look at the, uh, the pores on the skin and everything else with it. Yeah, that's my job is to just soften that just a little bit in the post. Uh, and the only thing that we'll use is just take the texture off in raw before we process it um, but yeah really good like it so in fact let's just do two quick shots we always do a test shot at the beginning come up to me a little bit it's good i've got a hair going straight across the cheek on this side there you go slowly lower the chin a touch more darling keep it keep it have a quick look yep just gonna step back a fraction just to uh, give a little bit more space. I really want to crop in camera, remember. I don't want to do all this kind of cropping in post-production for the sake of it, even though because we're studio stand-based or tripod-based, I could select all the images, kind of crop across the whole lot. I still want to make sure there's uh, enough space above the head and enough space below here. As a rule of thumb, today in, in, in kind of what we're doing, it's pretty much all horizontal kind of headshot photography. We very rarely shoot a kind of a vertical, except for more kind of the creative sessions uh, to add into the portfolio obviously you've got to do that with like body shots and things with it okay so let's do that first thing lower the chin darling a touch keep there if you stay there for me a minute okay i'm just going to move this out of the way let's do exactly the same shot keep it relax i'll put that back in a minute so let me just do that comparison so fingers you can see straight away yes agreed you can see the uh, difference in those images as far as the light and the bright, especially down the shadow side of the face and so on with it. Yeah, that's kind of uh, without any question, you can see it there. Um, I think we need to actually bring a little bit of, uh, so I call this the classic kind of modern or a modern creative, you know, it's kind of just is this drop focus element more, more than anything else. So it's kind of really sharp from the chin and all this kind of round area, like we did a face peel, that is all sharp, yes? Including the tip of the nose right back to the front end of the ear. Once I go less than 2.8, I can't do that on this lens anyway, but once I go less than 2.8, basically I've lost the sharpness on the nose uh, and basically it's gonna look a little bit weird. It's just gonna look like a smudge rather than actually a textured part of the face. But if we just did a side-by-side a side -side comparison, Straight away there, you can see the difference, um, first of all, in the light and bright, uh, the brightness where we're using the reflector on the left-hand side and we're not on the right. But then if we kind of go into this image and we look at the, um, uh, the highlight in the eye, you can see we've got beautiful color in the image on the left-hand side. Don't get carried away with that because I still prefer the image on the right-hand side I know we haven't done any work on it yet, but I still prefer the image on the right-hand side, and then all I need, I need to do is go and uh, brush in and brighten those light eyes and things with it. But uh, again, uh, shaping and form and everything else. So just, just don't get carried away with one of these all the time. Have you got a piece of card there a minute? No, I tend to actually hide all women's ears, right? Uh, it absolutely, and it's just one of those things. Uh, it's because, you know, naturally, most women with long hair, you do that, isn't it? And, and I just go, why? <laughs> um, but it's just a Mark Cleghorn thing. So where possible, um, if they've got really long hair, like beautiful hair that she has, we want to actually cover that up. So let's do the shot. Turn the body that way a little bit more, darling. That's great. Let me just change the focus position on the eye. Keep it. 
So this is with the triflector. Just going to pop this on top to give a very, very similar look. Again, turn the head that way a little bit, lower the chin a touch more, and relax. Um, so that will do a very, very similar job. Thank you. Um, let's just go in and have a little look. And the other image as well. Let's do a side by side. So you can see the, the one on the left, which is the triflector. I know she's turned her head a little bit more on the right hand side, but both of these have a uh, reflector element of some kind in, um, but you can see already how it's, it's much better with that piece of card, why uh, you don't have the uh, kind of the cat's eye effect. So if you were doing a lot of this stuff, I would use a big sheet of white card put in front or a white tabletop or whatever it would be to actually kind of get those images. You often see me kind of using one of my kind of plinths or pedestals uh, for the shot. Let's do it. Uh, lower the chin a touch more, a little turn of the head on the side. Let's turn the body round towards that way fully and then turn the head back to me. Okay, so remember I was saying to you, a little lean with the head on the side, that's lovely. Lower the chin again. Okay, and again, happier, just a touch. Turn the head to me more, darling. A little bit more, eyes at me. It's great just there. Turn the head a little bit more. Let me just move that focus on the eye. There you go, faking it a little bit more. That's good, faker you are, dear. <laughs> Excellent. Right, so um, there's a reason as a rule we don't point the body of a woman towards the light. And remember, it's because it makes the body thicker and it flattens the chest, all right? That's why we always turn the body away from the light source with a woman, so as we can create a shadow cleavage and it'll also make her look thinner no matter what. With a guy, traditionally, we turn them into the light source to give more bulk, more strength um, to actually kind of do it, and then it doesn't matter as far as the kind of the, uh, the solidity of the body is concerned. However, you've got to kind of look at a fashion guy and everything else and go, do you know, he looks absolutely amazing. I'll, I'll photograph him with women's light. I kind of still call it women's light. You shouldn't do it in today's way, but I kind of look at the feminine kind of uh, flow with it and things really. But again, here, uh, if we were shooting more body shot, we wouldn't be seeing any kind of shape. And you can see how that light is hitting the chest and it's giving no real kind of uh, direction with it and things really. So um, as far as the other little things that I would encourage you to do, um, in the kind of the basic session, we're gonna turn the body that back that way again. Let's turn back here. Let's do it again. Uh, can you go back and touch me? Whoa, that's lovely. Turn the head. That's gorgeous there. Quick test again because we changed things. That's lovely, better. Okay, keep it. Small little smile, that's lovely. Pull up the shirt collar a little bit for me as well, can you? That's great, same, same shot again. Instead of just the push, just kind of the cross of the arms, just a little bit, it's gonna give good shape, turn the head this way, that's lovely. Half a little expression for me, that's great. And again, eyes at me darling, straight there. Do you feel the difference when, yeah, yeah, okay, because she's naturally looking into that lens, and I've got a reminder, no, no, look at me, kind of thing, and it just adds that extra little position. I wonder if we can see it. You can see she's looking at me. Guaranteed, we've got a connection there as far as the eyes are concerned, whereas here, she's looking down the barrel of the lens. You can just see it. So the eyes are slightly more closed than they are kind of fuller and things really. And obviously, if you've got um, a client with a slightly smaller eye on one side or another, we usually actually turn the smaller eye towards the camera position, trying to get that to be much bigger. If it's really that bad, you turn the big eye toward, uh, towards us and basically put the smaller eye in shadow more and things really. There are tricks that we can use all the time. I, I think we're pretty much done, to be honest. I think we've satisfied our 30 minute kind of 150 quid worth of session and the three tops and the three variety. If you want to step out for a minute, if we need to bring you back again, stay as you are and we will. Um, but that kind of gives you a, a, a basics of what I would expect for you to be doing in a kind of a headshot photography. Um, if it was a more basic kind of ser service that I'm offering the client, I'm not going to retouch all of those images before she sees, uh, before she sees them. If we were at a workplace and they were all having to choose three or four images, then basically, once we'd finished, we would go through and select them and star rate them to, for me to know the ones that they want. They're the ones that they really like. Then pretty much I can ignore all the others, but I wouldn't delete them as source. 
Uh, the great thing about uh, shoot, uh, sh uh, shooting tethered for headshot photography, you literally can move straight from the camera, straight to the edit point, and you're basically getting into the choice selection straight away. But if this was being done to her agent, in fact, even though we would go through, go through them, the only images that I would edit out before we kind of show them to the agent would be any blinks or blanks or whatever it would be. Those are the only ones that were done. All of the images then, my selection would have a quick run through a very, very fast pass as far as looking at any images. I definitely don't want to show the agent. Then, obviously, all I've got to do is process those J uh, raw files into a JPEG file, the full resolution. I upload them to the client gallery. I switch on the proofing part. That in SmugMug, it puts the copyright across it or my logo on it or whatever it is. And I can even limit the quality that the client can see in the different kind of grades. Because as soon as I upload the full resolution into the likes of SmugMug, it basically makes multiple cop uh, the copies in resolution. I don't have to do anything else and it doesn't strip any of the metadata at the same time and so on. But as when we print from the image or when we download the image, of course, then they're actually downloading the full quality of the file. But uh, again, Again, it's, 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 uh, it's different things. You'll obviously all work in your own way.